Hey folks and welcome back to one of my many police recruitment masterclasses. I'm Brendan from Blue Light and I've been coaching and supporting people just like you now for over seven years, getting on for eight years. Over 5,000 people are in the police service as a result of my support. So today what I'd like to talk to you about is the Derbyshire Police final interview. Now what a development this one is, really, really interesting. There's three parts to it. Uh, the first part of it is a 10 minute presentation where they want you to talk about the value of diversity within the police service and especially within Derbyshire Constabulary. So 10 minutes to talk about that. How are you going to fill that 10 minutes around the importance of diversity? So I thought I'd do a short video just to give you some tips and hints. If you're one of my clients on the interview course, then please do go to the client uh, Facebook group where I will post a longer video with far more detail in it and far more things for you to think about and that's also going to go on the interview course as well. I know that's a shameless plug but if you want to find out more about that then click on the link below. Uh, it'll take you to the interview course and also uh, you might be thinking also wow £69 for that I'm not quite sure if I've got that kind of money and will it be worth it? Well I know it'll be worth it because and get awesome feedback every day of the week. But, you know, that's just me saying it, isn't it? So one of the things you could do is jump on one of my masterclasses, uh, a two hour event where I share with you the three big mistakes that people make in preparation for, and actually when they do go for their final in-force interview and how to avoid those mistakes. It's full of all sorts of detail. Also give you my swipe file of potential questions that you're going to get asked. Yeah, you can download things in a presentation in a masterclass. Isn't that awesome? And the great thing about the masterclass is you only pay for it, and it's £9.99. What's that? Price of two meal deals. But you only pay for it after the event and only if you thought it was amazing. How fair is that, eh? I can't be fairer, could I? Anyway, back to the subject. Back to the subject. Derbyshire final interview, diversity. Well, I want you to start thinking more about... Um, the, the three different avenues that you could take your presentation in, which is, isn't just diversity, but also diversity, inclusion, and equality. Now, I've highlighted some areas here to, as prompts for you. So I'd like you to think about the different types of diversity, and it's not just the protected characteristics. And for those of you who are thinking, what's a protected characteristic? Look it up. You need to know this stuff. But it's not just about protected characteristics. There's more to diversity than protected characteristics. And why is it so important? Why is it so important that the police actually represent the communities they're a part of? Well, Sir Robert Peel set that down in 1829 as one of the founding principles of the police service, that the police are the public and the public are the police. Um, now, a prize to any of you who know the bit that comes after. The bit that comes after is really important, by the way. So it's not just that line, but there's more to that principle than just the police are the public and the public are the police. So the importance of this. Well, if you've got a police service that represents, that truly represents the community, then you've got people within the service that understand different cultures, understand different religious norms, understand different cultural norms. And I'll give you an example of that, just from my background, because I've got family who are Bulgarian. Um, I know a few Bulgarian, well, I know some Bulgarian. So if I knew that I was going to visit a Bulgarian family, <coughs> excuse me, then if I had a Bulgarian colleague on the shift, I'd just get in touch with them and just say, well, look, I'm going to report a, a report, you know, report of a shed breaking or whatever it might be, and that the family's Bulgarian. I don't want to use language line because they do speak some English. Um, how would I greet them? And so if it was in the morning, my colleague would tell me, well, you'd say dobro otro. And if it was the evening, you'd say dobro vecha. Um, and if you wanted to ask them how they were, you'd say kasti. And also, just little... You know, these, these are little things that you just wouldn't know. It's more than just language. So when a Bulgarian says, uh, no, let me get this right. So if they're saying, uh, no, they're doing this. And when they're, saying, when they're saying yes, they're doing this. Da, da, da. So you could get that mixed up, couldn't you? It's opposite. In Bulgaria, it's opposite. It took me a while to get used to it. I was thinking, wow, they're all smiling at each other, but they seem to be really annoyed because they're all saying no at each other. <laughs> and I was thinking, no, I'm going to write it. Da is yes. No, I don't get this. And it, it really does challenge your senses because you're so used to people going, mm -hmm, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Well, they weren't. They'll go, uh-uh, da, 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 ah, uh, da, da, da. See, I can't even do it. It's hard for me to do. <laughs> so that's why it's so important. Just little things like that. It's the little touches that make a difference. And plus, uh, the people in the communities that we serve, that we're a part of, will also see people like them. You know, who wants to be policed by an army of occupation? Um, and that might sound like a bit of a, um, a fierce claim, but... Do you know, can you imagine what it'd be like if the police don't get this right over the next decade or so, when we have public order scenarios on the streets of our country? Imagine in 10 years' time where the police have to go into a public order scenario um, in a community that's made up of a very, very mixed population, very, very ethnically, uh, religiously diverse, and they're given an order to put their visors down. And the reason why they put the, the visors down straight away is because Otherwise, it'd just be a sea of white faces going into police people who are from different backgrounds and are visibly different in terms of their ethnic background. It's just not acceptable, is it? It just doesn't feel right. And this is what's causing so many problems in terms of um, the relationships with many communities because they feel as though they're being policed by, and I've heard that phrase, like an army of occupation. They're not like us. They don't understand us. They don't understand our background. They don't understand the way we are. I can think of so many cultural misunderstandings throughout my years, especially when I worked abroad and I was the ethnic minority. And it took me a long time to get used to some of the cultural norms and some of the ways of doing things. Just little things like, and the island was Bermuda, by the way, where I worked in the Bermuda police, but um, a lot of the young uh, Bermudians were brought up not to stare at or not to look at um, authority figures and that's the same in Eastern Europe as well and I'd be talking to them saying look look at me look at me whilst I'm talking to you and they're not they're looking at the ground and me telling them to look at me whilst I'm talking to you goes against the grain it goes against everything they've learned at school everything they've learned from their family so this is why it's so important that we have a more diverse police service because we Unless we do, we're really not going to understand um, all of these issues. And, and just little things like this can quickly kick off and cause all sorts of distrust. Um, and, it, you know, I, I learnt a lot from working abroad. I've learnt a lot from working in Greater Manchester, where there's very diverse communities. And it's been uh, a privilege to be on that learning journey. It's taken a long time. It's taken a long time. Um, and what we don't want also is the sort of scandals that uh, pop up frequently, I'm afraid to say, um, where the police, off, police either as a force or as individuals are found to carry out acts of racism uh, or the institutional racism, which is still a tag that a lot of forces have. So I'd, I'd like to research all of that as well. Um, there's a great um, hard talk from the BBC on BBC iPlayer at the moment uh, for from a retired uh, black, I think it was a superintendent, Leroy Logan, uh, from the Met Police, talking about what it was like to be a black police officer in the Metropolitan Police. So, um, so much for you to look at, so much for you to research. I've got to keep this video short. Anyway, uh, some of the things there as to why it's so important that we have a more diverse community. Um, inclusion, um, look it up, look at what inclusion means. If, if diversity is a, attracting people to the party, if you like, um, inclusion is what's going to happen once they're actually in the service. So um, diversity is getting an invite to the party. And once you're there, inclusion is being asked to dance. So come to the party. Would you like to dance? Uh, I hope that makes sense because sometimes people get a bit confused about what inclusion is. So there's a lot of learning to be done in terms of inclusion. I put learning there in terms of the things that you'll be able to do in the future as a police officer and I think it'd be really good in your presentation to talk about that. Um, the, the, the sharing of the cultural norms like I've just discussed with you, um, I think that's important to ensure that everyone feels like they belong. So inclusion is when you have a, an inclusive workforce, it's a workforce where everyone's backgrounds, their beliefs, their values are all recognised and welcomed and people feel as though they have the opportunity to really truly be themselves and not have to pretend to be something else which is i've seen that so many times in the police 
Um, we've got to get away from this, this sort of mould of a police officer. Because I know a lot of people will behave in a way that they feel other people want them to behave in and they won't let their true authentic and emotional self be revealed. They'll be scared to do so. Where a more inclusive police service, a more inclusive workforce is one where people feel comfortable to talk about their values, their backgrounds, their ideas, their thoughts. Um, they're dancing. <laughs> they're dancing. They've been invited to the party and now they've been invited to dance. Um, so over to the next part, equality. I'd like you to take up the have a look at the legislation around uh, the Equality Act and what that means, uh, especially when you link that with uh, diversity and protected characteristics. Positive action, what positive action is all about and why that's so important. And how equality is not about treating people equally, it's about treating people according to their needs. So there's a lot of examples of this um, throughout the history of the police where people from certain backgrounds have got certain protected characteristics um, have not been treated according to their needs. Um, I'll give you an example of this. Some work I did with the College of Policing a couple of years ago as one of their associates in their peer review team. What we'd do is we'd go to police forces and we'd take a look at those police forces and how they were managing certain themed areas. And uh, one force I went to, I won't see which one it is uh, because I don't want to embarrass him, um, asked us to come and take a look at their diversity issues. And we found one Muslim police officer who, you know, he didn't think he was asking for much. He was the only Muslim police officer at the station, by the way. He was the only black officer at the police station. And he'd asked if he could just have somewhere where he could pray. Somewhere where he could pray. So every day he had to pray. Um, and he just wanted five or ten minutes just to pray. And his imam had already said, look, if there's an emergency, you know, you're forgiven. You, you, could, you, you can break the prayer or you can... If you intended to, to, to say your prayers and you couldn't because of an emergency, then, then that's fine. So he knew that. He knew that. He wasn't asking for a lot, I don't think. But his sergeant just said, well, go and find some spare room somewhere. And, and that wasn't appropriate, really. It wasn't really that appropriate. There should have been somewhere in the police station where he could have felt a little bit more relaxed, um, a little bit more... Um, in tune with himself so he could say his prayers authentically. And there's a lot of police stations now do have prayer rooms, or sometimes they'll call them relaxation rooms, a room where you can just go and get a little bit of quiet time. So it's not just about religion. But at this police station, no, nothing. Sergeant wasn't having it. Sergeant actually said, do you know, actually, you know, one of the comments the sergeant made was something along the lines of, you know, you're here to work. You know, I don't go and ask my inspector if I can say my prayers uh, every day. So why do you need to? Now, this was deeply upsetting to him because he felt as though he wasn't being treated according to his needs. The sergeant was thinking, well, I treat everyone equally. No one gets the opportunity to say prayers, so isn't that equality? No, it's not. It's not. Equality is treating someone according to their needs. So this individual had some religious needs. I can share with you that he was about to leave. He was about to leave. I don't know if they managed to put the wheel back on, because we did reveal that to the, um, the senior management team who asked us to come in, the chief officers. Uh, there was a particular officer that they needed to look up with his permission uh, because he's looking to leave. And the reason why he's looking to leave is something that you could, you could solve this tomorrow just by giving him the opportunity to say his prayers and perhaps having the rest of the station uh, brought up to speed a little bit with things like diversity, inclusion and equality. So there you go, folks. This was just going to be a short video, but it's turned out to be quite a long one now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And again, shameless plug. If you want to find out more, then please do go to my masterclass below. There's the masterclass. The links to the masterclasses. These masterclasses are awesome. So many people have attended them. and have had such great feedback. At the end of each one of them, there's an opportunity to work personally with me to succeed in every stage of the recruitment process. Uh, through an offer that you won't find anywhere on my website. You'll only find it at the end of the masterclass. It's £9.99 to attend. And like I said, you, you only pay after the event. You know, we don't take any payment. We take the card details, but we don't take the payment until after the event. So you only pay if you found it to be amazing. If you didn't, you just let me know and we don't take the payment. That's like going to the cinema, isn't it? And go and watch a film and only paying on the way out if you love the film. Or going out for a meal at a restaurant and... 
I know you do pay at the end, but only paying if you thought the food was amazing. If you didn't, you just say, I didn't think the food was amazing. And the manager just goes, okay, all right, see you again, I hope. And you just walk out. <laughs> That's how amazing my master classes are. Um, I've only had one person who's ever said, I don't want to make the payment out of hundreds. So that's testament to what you're going to learn inside that masterclass. Please do join the masterclass. It's going to make so much difference to your journey. And even if you're not applying for Derbyshire, there's so much here for you to think about that you might be able to bring into your own final Enforce interview. So I hope you got something out of that one, folks. Rather a long one, but I could talk for hours about diversity, inclusion, and equality. Um, and on the video for my clients, I probably will. So... <laughs> Watch out, clients. You're going to get a really long video, but it should be very useful for you. I'll catch up with you next time. Bye-bye for now.